Mr. Speaker, earlier this month, employees at Amazon's Bessemer, Alabama Fulfillment Facility rejected unionization by 1,798 to 738 vote. That's a monumental 70% against unions to a meager 30% for unions. Bam! That kind of vote sends a powerful anti-union, pro-liberty message to America and the world. I applaud Amazon's Bessemer employees for rejecting unionization attempts by out-of-state agitators from the president to Hollywood actors and on down. A primary reason why Amazon chose to locate nearly 6,000 good-paying jobs in Alabama is Alabama's non-union reputation. Alabama maintains that reputation after Bessemer's overwhelming anti-union vote, thus ensuring even more companies will relocate even more good-paying jobs from union states up north into Alabama. Alabama's a right-to-work state. What does right-to-work mean? Right-to-work laws protect citizens from being forced, forced against their will to join a union, pay union dues, and subject themselves to union bosses. Alabama's right-to-work status gives Alabama a strong economic advantage over forced union states. For example, 69% of jobs reshored from overseas back into America between 2010 and 2019 have gone to right-to-work states. U.S. Commerce Department data adjusted for cost of living differences reveal that 2019's manufacturing job pay in right-to-work states averaged $83,000 per employee, $4,000 more than in forced union states. That is a big difference in pay. According to Bureau of Labor Statistics data, right-to-work states' overall job growth was a robust 11% over the past decade versus a meager 2.4% in forced union states. When that data is limited to manufacturing jobs only, right-to-work states over the past decade enjoyed a very good 9.1% increase in manufacturing jobs, while forced union states had a horrible two-tenths of 1% cut in manufacturing jobs. Better yet, 2018 census data reveals that after-tax mean income per household after cost of living adjustment was $64,572 in right-to-work states versus $60,244 in forced union states. That's, on average, $4,328 more real adjusted for cost of living income per capita in right-to-work versus union states. That is a huge difference. So, Mr. Speaker, the economic data clearly proves that right-to-work laws benefit workers. Consistent with that economic prosperity and desire for freedom and liberty, after all, no one likes being told what they can and cannot do. 74% of Americans say they support right-to-work laws, according to a recent Gallup poll. Despite overwhelming American support for right-to-work laws, dictatorial socialists in March rammed through the House a bill that repeals all right-to-work laws in America. Worse yet, dictatorial socialists seek to use President Biden's infrastructure bill to slip in a provision that repeals all right-to-work laws in America. I hope neither of these terrible dictatorial bills ever reaches President Biden's desk. Certainly, I will vote against them, and I will vote for freedom, liberty, and protection of America's right-to-work laws. Mr. Speaker, America would be stronger if more states would enact right-to-work laws. I encourage citizens and elected officials to promote right-to-work laws, freedom of choice, and the freedom and liberty right-to-work laws represent. I yield back. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Jimenez, for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I ask for unanimous.